Hello and welcome to another episode of Be The Hero Of Your Brand. I'm Ben. And I'm Rachel. And we are the team here at Your Video Team. Yeah, we are. <laughs> there we go. You alright? Yeah, not bad. We've got new cushions. I know. Oh, new so. cushion covers. We've had the cushions a little while. <laughs> and new wires. like and New wires to match our branding a bit more. It's all branded. It's, not, it's, not, it's a little bit off, but I like, I like that. It. It's a really nice colour, isn't it? Yeah. yeah, my orange is a bit paler. And yours is a bit darker, but till. But yeah. I do like it. I think it goes well. Because we're very nice. So, we're here. And you've got these in more colours as well for, like, everybody. Yeah. Not quite everybody, but you I've probably will be. Yellow, blue, red. I know damn well you will be over time. I can't remember what the other colour is. Purple, maybe? But, oh yeah, got fair fruit colours. Fair fruit. Fair fruit colours. Fair fruit colours. So, we're here to talk about how small businesses should be portraying themselves. Yeah, we spoke about levelling up last week. We did, yeah. And I've had a couple of conversations. We had one of the week. Well, I say one of the week, and we had a couple of conversations last week. And then, funnily enough, just had one, and I was like, "Oh, I know we've got a podcast plan, but I actually think this is really relevant. Re- relevant? Re- relevant. 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 It's a revelation of relevance right now. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, positioning your business as that enterprise business as that success that you want yeah and obviously we talk about like people talk about manifesting and things like that and I think they're all part and parcel of it like we have begun to manifest we've manifested for a little while but we've understood there's manifesting with actions yeah you can't just be like manifest and it comes to you yeah because you sit on your ass I I think Mel Robbins in her book that we listened to yeah it was or it might have been her podcast. It was on Amazon. For I've Apple. done a lot of Mel Robbins. Yeah. <laughs> but she said manifestation isn't about ma- just manifesting. If you want to run a marathon, it's not just manifesting you running a marathon. No. It's you manifesting the getting up at 5 a.m. to run for 20 miles in the pouring rain. It's manifesting the bad with the good. Yes. And it's, but then it's also action in that. Yes. It's like understanding, believing that, feeling that like you say manifesting it but then you can't just be like of course i could like then wake up on marathon day and be like having done nothing ready but but thoughts that you could do it (laughs) yeah and there is an element that the power of thought like we we've spoken to um joanna from family law cafe about this who was is was an olympian yeah yeah and she said like she did an experiment on us actually didn't she like how far can you put your hands back behind you um and we did it and then she was like now shut your eyes and believe that you can go back further and she was like now do it and then open your eyes and we were like whoa <laughs> and it is that element of like belief but we still had to action it we couldn't just open our eyes like magically our arms were behind us we had to do something yeah so it's the act as if isn't it now that this is what we're saying to other small businesses it's the, the approach that we're trying to take is the act as if so act as if you are that big corporation that you have grown your business to be think about the steps that they're taking to make that happen think about the processes that they have in place which is very much the first point on this is yeah are you starting as a small business owner to put those systems and processes in place yeah i think you know, we, we've said like this part of this podcast, it's it's not about us, but understanding our journey and learning from our journey with us yeah. and along the way. And we haven't put that in place from the beginning. No, we we kind of we say we fumbled through business for the last <laughs> few years. And it is it, it sounds like a joke, but it's probably very true. Like you you asked me how long does it take me to edit something? I'm like, uh an hour <laughs> and then it's two or and things like that but i'm kind of i was kind of creating a new thing every time i was yeah doing it where now i've got a system a system a yeah and... which it, which it has been learned over time which things like that do take yeah. but i think the problem is is that i've never recorded how i was doing it as i was doing it no so even if i did learn i might I might have found something quicker but not realised it or yeah. done something different and, and it was you, better. And you will naturally get quicker at your role. Yeah. Um, and it's something we've discussed is going like not charging for your time, charging for the project. Proje- project. My 
mouse is not working today. My phone is. Yeah, yeah I, say, like, I'm, I can feel it on my watch. I'm like, bing, bing, bing. Um, so, so yeah, it's bringing in systems, processes, and as far as SOPs from the beginning, because going way, way back to our original days of Pizza Hut when we first met together, something that was integral. I mean, you was the trainer when I first started and then I actually took that role on as I developed within the, the business um, within the restaurant we're, and a part of training was and an integral part of it was cross training yeah so I joined as a waitress you were I want to call you a chef but I feel like that's a very strong oh, kitchen word. hand kitchen hand <laughs> let's yeah, call it that <laughs> um, <laughs> but something we did was we did every role yeah so I came on to make table to learn how to make the pizzas, to ha- learn how to proof the dough, to then cut the, ta- the cut the table, cut, cut the table, cut table to learn how to cut the pizzas, and you know the rights and wrongs and do's and don'ts. And similarly, you'd done that out in the front of the restaurant of like understanding how to seat a table from the host's perspective, understanding how to make the drinks, and and by us learning that made a better relationship within our team because rather than stand at the hatch where we collected the food and be like what's taking you so long like you'll take it forever but what is we understood oh wow i can see you've got six tickets and also do you need a hand what can i do to assist because yeah. there was a level of skill there you had why are you smirking yeah, just trying to think how often you came and helped me when I was struggling with 45 tickets on the screen. I wasn't helping you because I had to be out the front <laughs> making sure everyone was happy because you were so slow. <laughs> yeah. But no. <laughs> but a key part as a trainer is you taught everyone the same process. Yeah. And of course, no process is easy. Well, everything gets easier once you know how to do it. But you you need to teach people that. And if it was a case of, oh, you stretch, you teach one person one thing and another person another thing or the same thing but in a different way then what they learn is different and then the final product is something different once again the 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 whispers through techniques and shortcuts aren't helpful because it makes a different product by the end of it which is where standard of operations and and training kits and the, the way things are or the way things should be are what is essential to help make your business grow because you have to remember like I mean, you always use the the coffee, like the latte analogy. Um, I'm going to switch it up slightly because I was out this week for um, birthday cocktails with some friends. Uh, not my birthday, but a friend. Um, and it was really funny. It just made us die because we ordered a round of cocktails and two of us had the same cocktail twice. Mm-hmm. On both occasions, those cocktails came out differently. And you think, from a customer perspective... What does that look like? Like the first time our espresso martinis had the coffee beans on and they looked presented delicious, lovely. Um, and we had a, a caramel frothy, I don't know what it was, but it was it was the only <laughs> uh, salty caramel. And the reason it was salty caramel, because the second time it came out, it had salt around the top of the lip. But the first time it didn't. And we were like, oh, hang on a minute. Like, what's going on here? We had one passion fruit martini with a shot of Prosecco and one without. We was like, well, that's really bad because they were served at the same time. Yeah. So from a customer perspective, what's right and what's wrong here? What should I expect? Should I now complain that I don't have that when I had it last time? Well, the menu says what it is. So if it's saying it comes with something, then you should be requesting it. Yeah, and that that's the issue is that little changes as one person tells another, t- then they tell another, and then they tell another. They all kind of they have their influences and don't necessarily re- don't. they don't necessarily refer back to the tools and uh, operation standard of operations to make sure that they are telling the next person right. So it changes and it becomes a pro- product that started off here is now over here. Yeah. So how how are we ourselves it works in services as well? Ultimately, I mean, we have a subscription service. Yeah. So from a month by month scenario ultimately are we delivering the same month on month and for each partner yeah uh, you know and the same is one partner getting something different to another and yet they're paying the same price you know all of those things like we they might not talk to each other but you never know if they will yeah and also what stress was that causing us 
yeah, it was definitely a case that everything when we started off was a bespoke kind of <laughs> yeah. product and service, which we, again, finger in air, we'll price it like this. This is what you're going to get. We don't know if we're overworked or underworked at the point. But now we've systemized our product. It's a video podcast service. Yeah. It's, we know what we need to do when we're recording it. We're recording two to four episodes every time we see someone. Yeah. So we've got their month's worth of content captured. Unless it is a case that they need to have a slight difference and maybe they're a reactive thing, so they have to record it weekly. Then, How do we support that? Um, yeah. Does the studio travel to them? Do we set up a studio for them and they yeah. have that from us? And that's it. We've got a traveling studio that can go out and about, or we've got a studio space here, which you can come in and dress how you want. Obviously, we've got things here that <laughs> that I like represent it. us and <laughs> our services. And no, I don't represent our services, the do they? Yeah, just they're just, just Lego cameras. Yeah. <laughs> A fun side <laughs> but yeah so it's kind of going what okay and it, it's helped us price things correctly ex- make time scales effective it's helped mm. me diarize us properly yeah. as well because i didn't know how long it was taking you to edit so i was like oh that already takes an hour yeah. and then would book something in and he was like oh i'm only like 10 minutes in because actually you always say for every minute of filming is an hour of editing <laughs> It's probably not that but it's probably thing. yeah it's probably more like two minutes of editing so you look like double double um yeah and it is a case that you'd need to and mm-hmm. it, like coming to the editing side of stuff our process isn't the smoothest i would say in certain elements but oh, yeah. is in others so it's balancing it and going what do we need what this this there's a bottleneck here yeah in say syncing the footage and the audio together there's that there's this bottleneck here that we need to fix what do we need to find out to to fix it do we need to talk to someone else do we need to do a bit of research do we need to where is different program yeah Yeah. and and it isn't necessarily that you need to invest more in equipment probably just invest in another bit of knowledge someone who's been there first and has learned that step and they will happily tell you that or teach you that or you can get coached by someone and there's, there's probably a lot more of other systems in our business at the moment. I'm only saying editing because it's easy to, yeah. easy to reference. But there is definitely aspects in our business where, like the sales call, do we have a process for the sales call? You're developing that. Yeah. And it's, it's consistently changing, constantly changing, but it's consistent in a way that you can deliver it but making the subtle changes, one, to make it easier for you to remember or smoother for the call or... Comfortable as well. That, that's the thing, like, I'm not comfortable on sales calls because ultimately I'm not... A, like, I want people to want this because they understand the value of it. So sitting there, I'm not like the, the double glazing, like, you should buy this because I did da 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 Like, I don't feel comfortable doing that. So how can I have a conversation with someone, express the value of it, understand how it resolves pain points for that person so yeah yeah, all those things is like making it comfortable or you could hire someone tomorrow who's like i can do that and and does the yeah but also does that align with the value does it it does it align with the business itself also if you think about when you was a waitress and i'd done i'd done delivery stores Mm. you have a script yes okay you didn't have it well i think probably on your order pad there used to be written start a main thing oh it gave you give you little prompts Yes. next to it as well to remind you of what you need to say because that's the only tool that you had then but there was always like would you like not a side or a starter would you like any wedges or garlic bread yeah you had to make a recommendation over making so and that's the same thing here what are the um key points that you need to get into the conversation to one wow the person that you're talking to and encourage them to say yes at the end isn't it yeah absolutely so with that in mind as well of of the the systems and processes is something we're bringing in because of that to understand each other's roles and because we are looking to grow is bringing in SOPs so standards of operating procedures so that I can truly understand how long things take so I'm booking in but also like that goes on to our next point of like outsourcing we could have someone walk in the door tomorrow and we can go here is the process for editing a video podcast that is our standard for operation procedures. These are the programs you follow. This is how you do it. Um, 
and that's so I've got a sneeze just buried and it just popped and didn't go um, <laughs> <laughs> but it's that little it's those things that again are beginning to level us up yeah yeah if we brought somebody on board one we want that we're bringing them on board not not necessarily because of their skills and assets that's a bonus what we're bringing them on board for is their aptitude the way that they come in it matches what we have as values in our business as people as what we want to represent us so you don't need to be the best editor in the world that would be great but are you going to work with us in the same way that we we want to be working with people if and uh, uh, outsourcing work yes you're good you can go to a skilled editor and they will edit stuff but again the, the way that they edit could reduce produce a different product to what we we make for people or what they were expecting from their brand guidelines because that that's that's the key thing here it's not about what we necessarily want it's what our partners want yeah the people absolutely. we serve what they need what their brands are being represented as and we need to have the right people to to do that we don't want somebody to come in and be like this is my show now yeah no th- when it yeah no absolutely not that, and you will get people and within different areas of the business that are like this is how you have to do it and this is like and you're like but why well that's the only way i know how to okay we want adaptable people people who bring ideas to the table understand there are sops in place but also how can you add value yeah that is i mean specifically for us but there are also businesses out there who will say i need this person who does this knows this does that you know so but at this stage this level i would also start outsourcing early and factoring that in early yeah because again a huge mistake we made was we didn't understand the value of ourselves what we wanted was to build a business built a business that great we were busy but we couldn't grow Mm -hmm. because we were full-time just earning enough well so yeah and it's kind of like we've valued money over time when really we should be constrained on valuing time over money because you can make more money you can earn more money but you can never get your time back which is yeah well, like I say, we, we were earning what we needed to earn as a business. Like we, we could have quite happily sat there and gone, "Yeah, we're getting, we, you know, we're keeping a roof over our heads and stuff, great." And the business is ticking over fine. But from a growth perspective, we now had no more time to give to potential new people, mm-hmm. and so that became quite a large learning curve quickly quirve quirve i don't know what's happening we're just gonna have to i promise i've not been drinking i know i said i was out for cocktails <laughs> most of mine were virgins um, <laughs> like i don't know what's happening <laughs> just, yeah i can't smell toast so i'm fine in that sense as well <laughs> like <laughs> <laughs> yeah so you're you're quite right there there was a point where we were just ticking over but really busy <laughs> And couldn't grow, but we are, we now see the value in other other people. We're, I'm trying to I'm trying to think of a way to word it. When you're a small business without the mindset of growth, you're very much going. I'm going to save every penny I can. Yeah. I'm going to do everything. I'm good to wear every hat. Yeah. Um, but then that increases the chances of mistakes, of stress, of n- not enjoying what yeah. you do because you start a business well, we started this business because I enjoy making videos yeah. I enjoy editing more filming I enjoy a lot more filming but that, but that is it more filming you want to do the filming and then and actually all it. I want to do is set up lights and make everyone look awesome <laughs> right, on camera <laughs> yeah when do you start making me look <laughs> you look pretty all the time oh well done that was quick well done <laughs> <laughs> but but this is a, that is the thing I mean you know a classic example is like we're currently going through the changes of what? accountants oh right yeah um, oh my god and i spent you know and our accountant bless her when we had that conversation with them as what we want and what we need out of them and things she was like right you guys are capable here's the paperwork onboarding da, 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 do it and i was like yeah i'm totally capable of doing that and she was like it's ta- like there's no point in spending 200 pound on me to do it 
when you're capable of doing it yeah great absolutely so I I was like okay cool and I spent six hours got myself in a right faff over it it I you know probably have done it right but I don't feel confident in having done it right I have got confused with different areas of it and in the end I just emailed them and said I just want to pay you that 200 pound can you I'll come to your office I'll bring all my ID I'll bring Ben and our hands so we can sign everything there and then that 200 because again that stress I got myself in in that day knocked on for another day yeah and that's six six hours of work that you've done now which is totally irrelevant to our yeah. earnings yeah like we've earned nothing all, apart from a certificate got a certificate yeah, yeah. <laughs> but that's all no, that, I that's got that the day before but that's that all done that, but that's it isn't that's it all like yeah. it, when you could should have been emailing potential leads should have been Creating planning content. planning our content should have been communicating with our our partners so actually that 200 pound that you, you could have spent from the get-go would have made us probably a heck of a lot more in those six hours yeah. Yeah, absolutely. So, so it's that it's that well, that's the balance. Even if it hadn't made us money, it, it would have retained money because of the relationship I cha- retain with our partners and things yeah. like that. And so again, I mean, it's a very drastic. We haven't lost anything in me doing that two hundred pound. No, but there's a risk of it. Y- yeah, there and that, is. And that's what you're doing. You're negating the risk when it comes to outsourcing, and you're able to spend more time on your business, which allow- allows us to learn allows us to talk to more people it allows us to make your own content it allows us to open up communications things that you learn you can pass on to other people and from a perspective knowing we have this appointment booked oh the stress levels are off me like i don't feel that weight on me of them are they going to email back and go oh you haven't signed this or this is wrong or that's done wrong like i'm scared because also I'm a rule for, like, I want our business to be set up in such a whiter than white way. Yeah. You know, that there is never any challenge with anything. So I don't know that I can do that. These experts can do that. So again, look at the experts of who you're yeah. talking Yeah, and it's to. open communication. When we think also an accountant, for example, we might go, okay, we're concerned about cash flow at the moment. Do we need to be concerned about it? Find up the accountant. They'll go, yes, no, maybe, don't know. No, yeah. Well, they shouldn't say don't know. <laughs> but that's yeah. the thing. And that is a side of the business that we don't want to have our fingers deep in the pies. We no. want to be peeling back the crust, going to look, going, is it all okay in there? And them telling us it's fine. But if you're the person, if you're a kind of business owner who wants to be in charge of numbers, outsource the stuff that you don't want to do, yeah. that you don't necessarily want to be filming. No. You don't, you, it's too much stress for you. You don't understand how the equipment works. You don't know if something wasn't working, how to fix it in cer- certain... I don't certain have a deep enough knowledge. Yeah. Or, and again, I don't have a desire to want to know either. No. Well, I, I can pick up a camera, I can press record, but I I don't want to do that. I want to be... I want to be boss bitch. <laughs> <laughs> but, but, that's you, bitch. But, but you want to, you want to be talking to clients, leads... You want to be that people person. You want to be out networking. You want to kind Coffee, of... Coffee, cake, bring yeah. me to those events, please. But then you, if you're talking about that every time you're on this, so we're talking about podcasts all the time. We're talking about how you, it can benefit your business. And that is because we're doing the SOPs. We are outsourcing stuff that we don't need to, to need or want to be doing. Yeah. And that is making us have time to learn new skills, master our, our crafts become thought leaders which is the other well, benefits of exactly. acting like a position yourself as an enterprise that you you position yourself as a thought leader because you're forward thinking all the time about what you want yeah and it, again just by by doing the video podcast which is you know push, positioning us in that manner is what it's opening up for us as well already i mean you guys are hearing it already we're having speaking opportunities now like that's something I knew I would love to do, but didn't know how. Well, now people are knocking. Yep. Like, I'm like, well, okay. And we're talking about it now. So then more people are knocking. And it's like, that. that's exciting. Yeah. So the opportunity it's given us. 
then well, well it's given us more opportunities to be seen by an online audience as well because from this we've we've created our blueprint yeah we've created the content from from that blueprint we're posting it out we're being the seen to a lot it. more regularly blogs that we can create there, there's so much more opportunities and all these opportunities that all they're doing is growing us yeah it's making us seen by more people get followed by more people growing our audience people asking us more questions which we can uh, answer them or learn a new skill because yeah. it's what our audience wants and ultimately all of that is leading on to what any business with growth wants is a return on our investment yeah so the time that we spend here having our half an hour 15 minutes either side of setup breakdown so an hour of time is giving us all of that through again the blueprint that we've created which then gets put out into the big wide world has built our audience and now this afternoon i have a sales call because of that yeah like a, i'm gonna call it a sales conversation because i don't like a sales, call. a sales conversation you know and it is is to because someone has seen us heard what we do and gone i want that too yeah so an hour of our time could be about to onboard a brand new partner which for us is like I'm not going to do a percentage of what <laughs> that is, but you know, but, it is, is uh, without, we... well, jo um, one of our partners is a perfect example of like five times her income for a video podcast. Yeah. Yeah. Like, yeah. Incre insane. Increase our average spend from a client by getting, by getting her two or three extra clients a week. That's insane, yeah. isn't it? Where they were getting one client, maybe two clients a month, they're now one, uh, two to three a week. That's <laughs> just that's mad. So, so that percentage got even be higher than that. Sure. I don't think so. I don't know how that works, but it, yeah, you know, well, they were getting a one client a month, and they're now getting two to one three to, a week. One, one to two, yeah. So that that math is wrong. That's two, four, six. Oh eight. no, calls. Sorry, oh, calls. Okay. The conversion's different. Right. Yeah. Okay. So they can. So they're getting one call. They went from one call a month to two to three a week. Yeah. And then their conversion is yeah. now five times higher. Right. I got you. My mark there, <laughs> but that, and we've done that in a year. We've been with that partner a year. Yeah, like that's the thing. Like you, you've got to expect things to take time. You can't expect immediate results for anything that you do. You've got to kind of give at least three months to to a task. And really, after COVID, probably closer to nine to twelve. Well, we again, I've had this conversation. I'm sure I've mentioned it on here. Is a conversation I had where lead time for most partners clients used to be six to nine weeks is now six to nine months yeah and i'll tell you i'll tell you what, we're probably going into something okay. totally different and off off track here maybe we do need to do an episode based on podcast lead times yeah when you start to when you see the results that you truly want to yeah, that's want to see yeah, because there's certain it. things that are immediate like the amount of content you can get straight away is fantastic so you're getting more eyes on you but how long is it taking for those eyes to become a, a, a customer? Yeah, yeah, that's valid. So, but it does, it does grow you grow your sales. It does. But, and again, like you know, going back to that five times ROI for that specific partner as well is, I think that the other fact there is the people who, whereas she was asking people to come on her podcast, people are now asking to come on the podcast. Yeah, and it, you know, it's those things, the interaction, the now the webinars that we're getting out of it so you you end up doing that full circle of what has your video podcast done for you it's given you more things to do so you now you've got more systems processed it isn't just outsourcing though their growth is in their team as well so they've also taken on an actual ops manager as well yeah. to help create those processes and things and that that's the other thing outsource outsource your processes so everything kind of works together when but You've got to have that mentality to begin with. Yeah. Have the mentality that you're going to be this big corporation and start taking the steps. Act as if. Yeah. Like enterprise from the beginning. Yeah. We plan to take over the video podcasting world with your video team. We do. And we are, no, and we are going to take over the video podcasting yeah. world. So the only way we're going to do that is with an enterprise team. So I have every expectation that 2025 for us is going to ha see us hiring in freelancers, hiring in a main team internally as well. You know, we already have some exciting plans for our studio space, which 
people when we network for someone who's a bit worried about it ben you um i was always to be on professional there for your baby <laughs> uh, which i still did you still did <laughs> um for someone who was nervous and was like, oh, I don't think we should commit to this, how, tells everybody what is coming for the future. So I'm not going to tell you guys yet, but you've told a lot of people when we've been networking recently. <laughs> Your little face. Yeah. I yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but, uh, but that's it. Our goal is to be the biggest video podcast producers in the UK, in Europe. The world. To, I don't know if I want to crack the world. I'm not. I'm not. Don't you want world domination? It's like pink in the brain. I do. <laughs> <laughs> like, <laughs> but yeah, it, it's uh, that. That's our goal: is to be the biggest video video podcast produ- produ- production company that there is. The and video production marketing company. Yeah. <laughs> so that's our goal. That's us. And so, that, in summary, so the problem is, are we just? aiming for hilltops with that rather than the stars what's what's the next level <laughs> oh someone said it what's the next universe's name the, oh i don't know that the multiverse we're going to multiverse and all <laughs> so <laughs> let's keep it comic book related we go for the multiverse we'll go for the multiverse it's going to be that what if guy so yes in summary in summary we would suggest first thing is itemizing you know and even if you're a one-man band at the moment what is your system? What's your process? Get those written down into your SOPs so that if someone were to walk in the door tomorrow, you can go, Dunk, this is the process. This is what we use. These are the systems. Go. At that point, begin to account in your pricing already how much is this going to cost me? How much? If I was to hire a part time or a freelancer, you know, whatever route you go down, let's get that incorporate it into your costings now yeah and get and just put it to one side save it oh because at the point that you're ready to like bring that person in you can go well i know for the next six months i'm covered and all that person's going to do is bring me in more money so that person is there and retained so outsource to the experts and the areas that you don't want to do yeah don't, don't give up your enjoyment of a business no never ever um and and that just says, and position yourself as a thought leader, which is ultimately what the, all of this is going to do. Get yourself, oh, a bit more math. Get yourself something. I don't know what she was going to say, but she bit her mouth. So Get yourself out as a thought leader. It'll really hurt. You can take but, over. So, <laughs> <laughs> so position yourself. As... <laughs> what the hell? I don't, I'm, I mean, I'm bleeding. Oh, I got so enthusiastic about that. Um, so position posi- yourself. Oh, no, I've got no, it. I've got it. I've got it. I've got it. I've got it. But <laughs> I can't risk any more injuries. <laughs> Have you been hurt at the workplace by biting your lip in the podcast? No, 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 we've got to do a risk assessment on that now. You get too enthusiastic. <laughs> just chew into yourself. I'm, I'm like, yeah. Position. You, all this will position you as a thought leader. You'll have time to do your learnings. You have time to develop your skills. You'll have time to master what you what you do, and you will be able to talk to people about that. Be able to sell your services a lot easier because you you're concentrating on stuff that you love and enjoy and it's a lot easier to sell what you love and enjoy rather than oh i've got to do more accounts if i take on another client <laughs> absolutely no offense, unless you're an accountant yeah <laughs> where the accounts are like yes i've got to do more accounts <laughs> spreadsheets and stuff amazing so yeah you okay I, is it that was a good bite I did just look at the time, so it's half, half past 11, so it's probably lunchtime. I'm just, my body's like, you're hungry. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, so yeah, think big. Think big. Be big. Act as if, and you'll get there. Absolutely. And you know where we are, if you need any support. Love you, bye. Love you, bye.